Good evening, everyone. We are thankful for all that have joined us this evening for our midweek Bible study. What a gorgeous day we've had today and what a good way to end it with the gathering together and studying from the scriptures. We're gonna begin uh, this evening with uh, Brother Gary leading us in a song, followed by prayer, and then Brother Conley will lead us in our study here. Thank you, Roger. Uh, we will begin with My Faith Looks Up to the number 144. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. I believe I'm scheduled for the opening prayer, so won't you pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful to you for your providential care in times and past of today, the beautiful day we've had, that it's been very nice temperature, and we have rejoiced and been glad in it, Father, as we continue to look at aspects of your word. We pray that we might take it on and apply it to our living and become therefore better Christians, better representatives of your son, Jesus. We seek all these blessings through Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I thought we might do a little something with maps, so the first slides will have some questions on them. I'll be able to repeat them once we go to the map. And what we're gonna do is try to identify some things. And I may post the question for you to identify some things that are not listed here. So feel free to unmute and ask the question or give the answer if that's your pleasure once we go to the map. So I've got a total of five maps we're going to the first map I've got is a map that shows his third missionary journey of the many that you can find out online. Uh, but I want, I've got it not to show that journey, but to point out some other things because of the resolution on the map. And it makes it easier for the layman in Bible geography to uh, figure out things. And I've greatly enlarged it. And I, I apologize for the way I had to present it. I could have put it with the question beside the map, but I would have needed a magnifying glass to read it because it, 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 I'd have to really tone down the size of the font of the question. So 
Gary, let, let, well, let's, let me read them there in case somebody can't see them. Of course, we know Paul was quite a traveling. He didn't have the benefit of what was then modern transportation. He didn't have a camel to ride, and of course, he had a lot of over uh, water traveling and a lot of overland. I would say that about two thirds of his travel would have been over water, and the rest of it would have uh, been by foot. And if you remember, uh, Ron shared with us, I believe it was on Sunday, that he had found online where they had traveled, so he had traveled some over 10,000 miles. So you think about that a while. That means he traveled over 3,500 miles on foot. We don't even want to walk a half block in the park, from the parking lot to the store. At least I say we, I don't. Now maybe some of the rest of us, but I don't want to make that walk. He, he endured many hardships while he was traveling and many of them were near fatal. If you go and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 28, you'll see that. When we get to this map, I want you to kind of remember this, see what things we can pick off from this map from the book of Revelation. And, uh, uh, but there's a point of interest from Paul's journey to Italy. That's going to be on our fifth map. It's not on this first, the journey to Italy. But there's a point of interest that's pointed out on it. We want to see if you can pick that off right quick for us. And then you want to kind of locate Paul's and Barnabas's first stop on their first journey on, on this first map. So let's go to that now, Gary. Now, one of the reasons I chose this map is so I can point out Asia on the map, the Roman province called Asia. Now, we know that everything uh, on the right side of the Aegean Sea is Asia, even when you come down to Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is in Asia, just not Asia Minor. So that you can see it in pink there, Asia. And the reason I wanted to point that out to you, it, it may amplify for some of my hearers to understand when you go to Acts 19 and verse number 10, which you haven't covered yet, I understand that. Uh, it says that all Asia had heard the gospel. He's talking about this province of Asia, not the continent. So I want to be sure you would be able to see that. Uh, another thing that you might want to remember is the Black Sea and the Mamara Sea. Oh, thank you. Uh, the Mamara Sea is this little one right here, that, uh, Gary, right there just below the Black Sea. Yeah, the, that's the connector. It connects the Black Sea, you can run out to the Mediterranean from the Black Sea. Uh, now, as I said, this is a map, uh, one map of the third missionary journey, which is the only journey. Can anybody remember where that journey ended? The only journey, place. Only one, only place that one of his journeys ended of the three. Okay, I'll tell you the first two ended at Antioch of Syria. The third one did. Jerusalem. 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 Now he went to Jerusalem on the second journey. Jerusalem is the correct answer. And some theologians say that ends his journey. No, he left Jerusalem and went down to Antioch after uh, he had visited and gone to Jerusalem. Uh, why does his third journey end at Jerusalem? Anybody remember that one? <coughs> was he arrested? That's right. That's why he got arrested, John. He was arrested, and so he couldn't go back up to Antioch and report. 
uh, what had been going on. Let me see if I got something else. I Can anybody recognize anything from Revelation on this map? You should be able to readily see it. Philadelphia, uh, entire time. Actually, well, all all five of the seven churches fly. They ought to see it. All uh, seven of them are there. Yeah. It starts down at Laot, not Laot, at Ephesus. It goes to Smyrna, to Pergamon, to Tyre, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and then it completes at the Laot of So all seven churches. Uh, uh, that were addressed to the book, addressed in the book of Revelation, are on this map. So you can easily see now when they're talking about Asia, this is the only uh, part of the continent of Asia uh, that Luke is speaking of. Now, who was uh, lived up in uh, Pontus? Who was natives of Pontus? I asked the question wrong. Are you talking about Pilate? No. Who got chased out of Rome? Who did Paul meet at Corinth that had recently left Rome? Aquila and Priscilla. That's right. And there they hit their native nativity is Pontus. So you kind of see how things relate here. You see how big Galatia is on this map? It's a lot larger than Cilicia or some of it's about the size of Syria really at that time. These are all Roman empires. Now, let's go to the uh, next set. That we should get some questions next or some statements. Here's what I'd advise you to do. If, uh, if your memory is like mine, you'd have to copy the names of all the cities that were visited on the first journey in order to be uh, able to answer uh, uh, the, it's not a question, it's a declarative statement at the end of these uh, statements here. In order to answer it, you're going to need to know what cities he, uh, he went to and which ones he preached at. And there's an indicator that we find in, in Acts that would kind of tells us which cities he spent some time preaching at. What happened at the fourth city on the first journey, the first fourth city that they traveled to or through, if you please, what happened at that city? What city that's going to be located on this ne next map that has said to be, has, is said to be the oldest continuously occupied city in the world? I think I kind of expounded on that when I introduced it uh, back in Acts chapter 9. Okay, so let's go to the map now. It's a very simple map, so it should be easy to pick off uh, the answers to some of these uh, questions. So what's the first city they visited? Seleucia, right? Seleucia. Did they do any preaching there? And the answer would have to include the, whether the Bible record indicates it or not. And it yeah. doesn't indicate yeah, any preaching that. there. It just traveled through it. it. Went there to get aboard ship. And then they go west actually kind of southwest, to the island of Cyprus. I used to think that Salamis was on the western side and Paphos was on the eastern side, but it's the other way around. So they went from east to west. 
And so they went from Salamis to pay folks. And what's the uh, interesting about pay folks? Anybody remember? Uh, he meets the, um, he meets, El he meets Elemis, uh, the, the, the fault, the false prop, the false, the sorcerer. He's a sorcerer. Yeah, the sorcerer. And, and this is where we fir first hear him refer Saul referred to as Paul. Right. Two things come up there. We changed Paul, Saul to Paul, and this is where he ran into Sergius Paul. Yes, Sergius Paulus, but what we're talking about is Elements, Bar Jesus, I believe his name was. Or if I spoke it in Spanish, Bar Jesus. So then, now we hit the fourth city that they went to. What happened that is of interest? Anybody remember? No? <laughs> Nobody remember. What happened uh, with John Mark? He 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 left um he was homesick, yeah. didn't he, George? Yeah, he returned to Jerusalem. He left them and went back to Jerusalem, which reminds me that was, I missed one on that first map. I don't know how I let that get by me. Can you go back to that first map right quick for me, Gary? What point of interest is shown on this map that's not a part of the third, uh, third missionary journey, but it is a part of his journey to Rome. Well, the island of Crete, he wound up as part of the shipwreck process. He ends up at, I'm trying to remember, his fair havens where they the last. Not part of the shipwreck, but they stayed in fair havens for a while. You're right, at Crete. They stayed at fair havens. Remember the shipwreck. Now, we don't even have Italy on here. The shipwreck is right below Sicily. So that'll show up really nicely on the fifth map. So we, I was looking for fair havens because they stayed there a while. Well, this is where Paul advised them. Right. It's so quite to see. <laughs> and well, we want to stay here. So this is where he gave them the advice. And then just before shipwreck, he gets to tell them, see, I told you so. Yeah, that's the last place they took up before the shipwreck, I think. Yeah, what I'm trying to say. that's exactly right. But now the shipwreck is going to be about 1,500 miles from this place. If my calculations are right, they uh, he traveled, if you would take it from Caesarea, where he traveled, he traveled right at 4,000 miles to get to uh Wrong. It may be further than that. I just did that one by looking at map legends and measuring my distance. So there's your legend right there. And you can take it and figure it out how you can do it with a rule. And you can figure it out just by looking at the route he had to take to get there over to Rome. It'll show up easily on the fifth map. So let's go back to map number two now. I think we covered everything. Let me be sure. I don't want to miss a question like I did. Yeah. How many cities do the Bible record uh, um, say that they passed through? And how many of those cities that they passed through that he preached at? You can do that easily by counting. You just don't want to count uh, Antioch in it. Because that's the launch point. You never count the start point or the ending point. Both the first and second journeys in that Antioch. So you can you count out how many cities he visited, and then how many he preached at, according to the Bible record. So I uh, stay. I have to uh, 
to guard the silence of the Bible. So since it's not this silent about him not preaching at certain places, I have to look at it that way. So if we count the dots, he traveled, to, uh, touched some eight cities on his first journey lit that are, uh, uh, we can see listed in the Bible. So then, necessary inference tells me that he preached at six of those eight cities. It, didn't, uh, it doesn't tell me he preached at Seleucia nor Perga. He traveled through. So I, I observed, uh, uh, I respect the silence of the Bible, if you please. I'm not saying he didn't, but the Bible doesn't say he preached there. So that's enough for me. Next set for me, please, Gary. So we want to know how many cities he traveled through on his second journey. And we want to know I don't know how I missed uh, my missed, uh, my mess up there. I want to know how many cities he preached at on that second journey of the total. Give the name of the sea that Paul sailed from Troas to Neapolis. Then I want to know what is the name of the small body of water between the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea. And uh, we, we saw that in, on the first map. What is the name of the city where Paul first met Aquila and Priscilla? What city was there that Paul stayed for some 18 months? And I want to know what Roman province that city was in. Now we can go Matt. to the... Uh, uh, Yes, sir. Matthew, let me ask a question that Andrew was asking from Facebook. Um, you had said something about the city that's the oldest continually occupied in the world. Mm -hmm. Which one is that? Damascus. Damascus? Believe it or not. Okay. Damascus, Syria. I thought it was Jerusalem when I started researching it, but it's Damascus. It's got, uh, Jerusalem had broken occupation is where the problem comes in. All right. Okay, now we're on the third journey. So first question, second journey. Let me get my thoughts here. How many cities did he go through here? We're talking about the ones that he, like, in general, or did he preach at? No, how many we gonna come to? How many he preached at in general? I think Ron encountered them already. I think I'm counting sixteen, Matthew. I, you have we, you and I agree on that, brother. All right, I can count. And so, how many of those sixteen did he preach at? I'm gonna say fourteen. I would drop it one. Okay. And and the one no, I, I would drop would be Caesarea. I'm sure oh, yeah. he probably preached there, but the Bible don't cover it. Oh, oh yeah. But we know not at uh, Rhodes and Patara. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. So now what's about the, uh, the name of this small body of water? Marmar. Marmar, that's it. He preached at some 13 cities on that journey. All right. Wait a minute. I don't, I don't miss something here. I count it. Did I got? No, I got The it. other question was where did Paul meet Priscilla and Aquila? Yeah, that's the question I'm looking for. Where did he meet them? It was his first encounter with Corinth. Corinth, exactly right. Where was his last encounter with? 
That one's kind of tricky. But we're going by the Bible record now. The very next city that he where he leaves them at uh, Ephesus. And that's the last account the Bible gives of him dealing with them. Let me see if I got them all. What Roman province was the city that Paul preached for 18 months? What province was it in? I'm surprised George, George didn't blow me out of my seat. <laughs> How about a Kea? Kea, that's the right one. Kea is where it was. And he, he, he enjoyed that preaching there. Let's go to the next uh, set of questions, I believe. Real easy here. Which Macedonian cities are not mentioned as Paul's visiting on his third journey? If you start looking at the journeys, you're going to find he on the second journey, he would visit everything he visited it on the first. And then when you go to third, he visited everything that he uh, went to on the first and the second. But now he misses a city on the third. Uh, so according to the map that we're going to be looking at. And there's going to be some language in the text that infer that he visited those cities. So let's go to the next map. As his third journey, his first one's in light green, that his uh, on the way there, it's in light green, and on the way back, it's in the heavier green. And the Bible record indicates that he traveled through. Oh, I didn't count that. Where, where are we coming from with this, Matthew? What I wanted to know is which Macedonian cities are not. Uh, mentioned as him visiting that are on this map that he went through. It's only two of them. Went to one of them for sure. It's mentioned in the record. An inference Necessary inference says he went to those other two cities by the language of the Bible. Now, this one could be kind of tricky. What you got to uh, realize is who he collected to go to Jerusalem. That will place him in those other two Macedonian cities. Let me see if I can help you out there. You've got to go to Acts chapter, I believe it's at the latter part of, uh, no, it's in the first part of uh, 19. Middle of 19. It's in 19. I'll have to put it that way. Okay, let's move it, get faster. Thessalonica is going to be one of those cities where you naturally it has to be because he only, uh, uh, we only have three churches he established in Macedonia. And that's those three right up there that are on the nation way. Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea. Of course, the second one he did uh, that it uh, don't say anything about him going there, but it's in inferred that he went there because he picked up certain people. He had a, a lot of Gentiles with him 
when he went to to Jerusalem. Remember now, the third journey he ends at Jerusalem. That's where he gets arrested because they they accused him of taking Trophimus into the temple who was one of the Gentiles he had brought. Rhea would be the second city. It doesn't list as he am going, but there's no doubt that he went there. Also, doesn't mention him going to Athens. But Athens is not in Macedonia. Athens is a part of Achaia. So you can you can easily see uh, he's got uh, a good five thousand miles on this journey almost, Ron. If you look at the loop he made and his crooks and turns, because he it wasn't as the crow flies. So he had quite a trip on the third journey. Let me see if there's anything else. No, I'm not missing anything else. Okay, so let's go to that fifth map now. <coughs> okay, so shipwreck would be at Malta, which is right below Sicily. That's where they spent that three months, is at Malta. And as you can see, it's a good thousand miles probably by the route they, they've got laid out here. And the route would be that way during that time. Uh, from Fair Havens is where they have left from. So they had a, a, a rough, long trip. When we get there, can anybody find the, the, the city? of the boat they got on, the first boat they got on. Or you might not remember, you gotta go to 27 and... You're talking about the boat after the ship? Right? The boat from. When they went to no, another before. ship? The first ship they got on, the very first that they got on, according to Acts 27 and two. Well, 27.2 says, if I can pronounce this, embarking on... Adramatum. So what? Adramatum. Adramatum. Okay. And you can see it up there, right? In Asia. That's, that's where it's from. Now I'm going to ask another question that, that is, uh, you probably won't find it in the Bible. Let me ask this question. Anybody know what the third name is for Istanbul? It had a third name in history. Constantinople? That's him. John Constantinople was the third name for it. And where is Istanbul? Turkey. Turkey. So what, what I try to figure out is how did Turkey, according to this map, get a city that's in Europe. Turkey is in Asia. If I remember right, isn't it? Yep, it is. It has to be. Oh, buddy's been this one, Turks. It's in Asia. Yeah. But, you got uh, but this map, huh? And I've been there, Matthew, that little strait where the red dot is by Byzantium or Istanbul. That's called the Bosphorus, separating, like you said, the Black Sea from Maramara. Mara. And so on, you cross the bridge there at the Bosphorus, there at Byzantium, Istanbul, you go from Asia to Europe. Europe, right. I, there's no doubt in my mind that Macedonia is in Europe. <laughs> right. But yeah, you cross the bridge over on the east side of the Bosphorus there in that little strait. You're in Turkey. You're in Asia. 
And when we, yeah, I'm, we're going to do some more maps on Sunday. We're going to look at where he wrote his books and why he wrote them from where he wrote them. Anybody got any idea where they wrote? If you got a good ESV Bible, I believe it, it on the maps in the back of the ESV, I believe it points out where he wrote all of them from. We want to look at that too and understand why he would write what the letters when he wrote them. And of course, he tells you in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, after he talks about all of the perils he had gone through. And then he says, besides that, of, uh, of his feelings for the church. So he, he had a strong love and feeling for the church. So he had to write to them. He, he was truly concerned about them staying faithful to the gospel of Christ because there were so many false teachers around. Just like today, there are a lot of false teachers. Now, I, I think Bill would probably agree with me on this one. I don't think there's a preacher alive who hadn't taught something that was not correct. That don't make him a false teacher. But a false teacher is, is one who knows what he is, he is preaching is not the truth, but yet they preach it. That's a false teacher. Uh, when we were younger men, we would definitely Right. Oh, no, here they are. I don't know why I didn't even notice this. That's one of the reasons I picked this map. It tells you where each of the books was written from. Right here on this map. I guess that's part of getting old and can't see good. I got to get the eye check next month anyway. But you, you can see every one of them. If you just look real well at this map. And you, anyone can find this map if you have access to the internet. Trying to think of the name of that search engine I used to find it. It wasn't uh, Google Chrome, it was Bing. I got this one off Bing. I got this one and the first map off the, by going through Bing. And no, I got them all. Yeah, I got them all from me. No, I got that mixed up. I got this one in the first one off Google Chrome, and then the, the middle three off Bing. Bing didn't have these, and I like the resolution of the map and uh, the fact that it points out things so well, especially that first one. Well, I blew all of these maps up, I want you to understand, because when you find them on, uh, online, they're going to be small. So I, I blew them up for where that take up. As you'll see on that first map, it took up the whole slide. And the purpose of that is, is to help all of those who suffer from the same thing I do, near, far sighted and near sighted. I can't see things close to me. I can see those out away from me. But uh, when it gets start getting close, I got to have some help from some type of glasses or magnifying glass. Any questions, comments? None whatsoever? You gotta be kidding me. I appreciate the input from everyone. That I'm gonna give it back to you, Ron. I think that's my last slide, if I remember correctly. Yes, sir. You are correct. And next we will sing number 166. I got to retrieve one of the one of my choir members, so to speak. Um, <laughs> number 166, if you love me so. Oh, I'm sorry, let me get one more picture. Why, why did my Savior come to earth 
Well, we're, we're uh, appreciative of everyone that's joined us for our study this evening and for the songs and prayers. We uh, certainly are remembering our brother Bob's family at, these, at this hour and days, and uh, they are, they're doing well. And uh, I think a lot of part of that is that things were pretty much planned by Bob and they, they knew exactly what to expect. And, and uh, how things were to go and be done. And, but um, we certainly are needful of remembering them and the challenges that they're facing right now, for sure. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember if the email that went out had all the details that Bob had specified about things, but um, I do know that there's very little of a public nature that he, was desirous of having such as a formal funeral and a and a uh, even a memorial service and and all of the things that are normally done and so um, things as far as Bob is concerned obviously went exactly as he desired and we're we're very happy that he is now home with the Lord. Um, I don't have an update uh, today on um, Helen. Does anyone have that? I do. Okay. Um, she has been Monday and Tuesday. She was able to be on the trait collar for four hours each day, breathing on her own with very minimal oxygen. And today, Laura said she lasted six and a half hours. It's not that she lasted. It's that they're trying to build her lung strength up. So they're not trying to have her go for as long as she actually can, but in gradual steps. So that when she does get to the point of being able to do 24 hours, it wasn't just an all or none. This is stair, stair step thing for her. So good news on that. Okay. And I believe we do understand that Olivia is home. Is that correct? She is. She is home and um, spunky, and Emily will hopefully be back in Montgomery 
this weekend. I don't know yet where I'm going to place her. I may still throw mm -hmm. her at the lake. So um, for a little bit, just to make extra sure. We got to protect those that we love otherwise here too. So yeah. got to keep mom and dad safe. Okay. All right. All right. Also, I, d I haven't had a recent update on Miss Johnny May White. Um, I'm sure she's still suffering in some way because she she has some chronic illness, but uh, we never hear her complain about the things that she suffers day by day. Uh, and that's one reason it's so delightful to see her and to be around her is that she's always interested in someone else and rather than talking about her challenges but so keep all of our sick in your prayers and uh, probably it would help us all to be somewhat thoughtful of um our eternal destiny now that that uh, our brother bob has passed from this life into that uh, eternal life and um it would it would be a good thing for us to do some thinking about uh, whether we're finding ourselves on the pathway of righteousness and uh, whether we're being faithful to the lord's calling uh, i guess that was one thing that made bob's passing easy to bear because we uh, it was obvious that he was prepared for it and uh, we all can be and certainly do want to be. Um, I do believe, uh, Bud, you have the closing prayer. We will close and have whatever discussion, uh, you know, further that we, anyone desires. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time thanking you for all the many blessings you've given us. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to meet together uh, in this way. Father, we pray that you be with each one of us, Father. We we ask that you be with the Trevathan family as they as they've suffered a loss and be with each one of us as we've suffered that loss uh, with them. Uh, we know we'll miss Bob um, and but we know that he's in a better place. Father, we ask that you be with Helen as she continues to fight, as she continues to 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 want to to get better. We ask that if it be your will that that uh, you return her back to us again. Father, we ask that you be with each person that is sick among us and that, it, that you bless them and, and bless those that are taking care of them. Father, we ask that you be with this country. We ask that you um, be with us as we suffer through this, this pandemic and this unrest in this country. Father, we, we, knew, <clears throat> we know that there's always challenges, but we know that you are in control. We ask that you be with each one of us until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs>